Classic rock album reviews coming right at you. Schmack them up, people. Hey, one of these classic album things. You know, when I do my classic albums, they're not really considered classic albums to the masses, but they're considered classics to me. And I love talking about records that really went under the radar, that are really, really good. And uh, this time I'm going to talk about this right here. Erase the Slate from Dawkins. Let me tell you, man. This is my second favorite Dawkins album. Right after Tooth and Nail. I love Under Lock and Key and Back for the Attack and a couple other ones that, uh, after this. But <clears throat> this one, not really talked about because it doesn't have George Lynch. It has everybody else. But they got this dude, God damn, now I can't remember his name. And I met him too. And I told him how much I love this album. And I'm not a big Winger fan, you know, to tell you the truth. But this guy, uh, Red Beach. Wow, what a player. And he brings it on this album. Now, I have seen Winger live at one of these pre-crew shows. It was a bunch of bands. I wanted to see other bands. Uh, Last in Line, I believe, was on it. And Winger, they are talented musicians. So, I mean... Songs don't do much for me, but those, everybody in that band can play. And this dude's no exception. So, um, I saw the tour. It was with Great White. And it was amazing. This, this album's just fucking amazing. And I was driving around the other day. I got my iPod shuffle. And the song Crazy Mary goes around, comes on. And I'm going to talk about that song when we get to it. But I'm listening to it and I'm like, God, man. Such a great, fun song. And then I thought, such a great album. I need to do an episode about this because this is a perfect album to talk about because it went under the radar. Now, I know people out there that know this album. They might not agree with me that's his second favorite Dawkins album, but I bet you they like it. I don't think anybody that likes Dawkins would dislike this album, unless you're one of these George Lynch purists, which is like, well, it's... It's, uh, it doesn't have George Lynch, so I'm not allowed to like it. I don't care how good it is. All right. Uh, so, we're going to get into it. And I took notes. Uh, the first track is um, the title track, Erase the Slate. And it starts with a little count-off. I believe it's Mick Brown. And it's, uh, it's, it's the count-off of uh, Led Zeppelin's Ocean. Got four on the ready, and now we're steady. I think... Mick says a, something a little different, but it's still the same thing. And then it goes into this ripping tune, man. You know, my favorite docking songs are the fast ones, like Tooth and Nail, Paris is Burning, Till the Living Ends, Lightning Strikes. This is another one, man. This song just rips, man, from beginning to end. Did, is there anything else I, I wrote about this? Oh, yeah. It cranks. Um, and it was the first song I heard off this album. And I ran out and bought it. I was like, man, if that's the only good song on the album, I don't care. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get that. That shit's awesome. All right. Then it goes into Change the World. <clears throat> it starts with a really crushing riff. Then it goes into that melodic, uh, you know, melodic texture that Dokken is known for. Because they got a lot of melodies in their songs. They're very melodic with the, with the vocals and stuff. But it's really good, man. This song is... Uh, it's awesome. I dig it. Uh, then it goes into Maddest Hatter. Wow, do I love this song. It's heavy. I want the ordinary life. Da -da -da -da. You know, man, ripping. It's a song about Alice in Wonderland, the Maddest Hatter. And it was awesome. I remember that was played when I saw that tour. Just fucking badass, man. Love it. Probably my third favorite. Erase the Slate would be my favorite. Um, and there's a second favorite coming up. Um, Drown is the next track, and it's another heavy one with a dark vibe. You know, awesome melody, vocal harmonies on it. It's another excellent track. This album is awesome, man. Spoiler, I don't think there's a bad song on it. Some better than others, but... All right, then it goes into a song called Shattered. No, not the, not the Stone song, which is great. Um, <clears throat> uh, pr it's pretty much like Drown. You know, it's got that, you know, uh, 
heavy, dark vibe to it. Uh, but, you know, um, I think this one's a little better. But I gotta say, these two songs are not my favorites off it, but not skippable. I would not skip either one of these tracks. Next one is One, which is a Three Dog Night cover. My ankle is itchy. Um, one is the loneliest number. Now, <clears throat> I never hated that song. I thought it was an okay song, the Three Dog Night, you know? And I know many won't agree with this, but man, this version is better. It's one of the greatest covers I've ever heard in my life. Seriously. I love it, you know? Don, Don Dawkins gets, you know, I mean, I know now he has no voice, but, you know, back in the day, you know, because he had, you know, George Lynch, you know, and it was like, you know, his voice ain't that good. I think Don's got a really cool, interesting voice. Technically not great, but I love when he sings this song, like a lot of songs that he sings I love. I love here where he's number one. Is, I love it. I love he has that little texture in his voice that nobody has. Like when he hits that number one, that, that type of high register thing he does. I love it, man. It's an awesome, awesome ballad. And yes, I know many won't agree with me, but I think it's better than the original. All right, the next song is called <clears throat> Who Believes. Uh, this is a ballad. Uh, I don't think this one's that great. Again, not skippable. It's decent. Um, and uh, But the solo. I mean, but Red Beach, this whole album, man. He's just ripping every song. Killer solos. So, yeah, it's a cool tune. Uh, I like more the next one, Voice of the Soul. I think it's killer. I love those crunchy riffs. Again, a dark vibe with great melodic elements. It's a great fucking song. All right, then we go into Crazy Mary Goes Round. Now, this is going to sound crazy because Crazy Ralphie goes round now. As far as a fun song, like a fun song, this is the greatest fun song ever, I think. You know, there, uh, there's a lot of songs I love that are fun. You think you're tough from rat. You know, there's a lot of cool, I can think of a million of them. This is my favorite one, though. There's something about this song, and Mick Brown sings this song, and he sounds amazing. I love Mick's voice. And I think, personally, if this was released in the 80s, it would have been a huge hit if it was an MTV video pushed by Electra Records. I think it would have been a huge smash because it was tailor-made for the mid-80s. God, I love this song. Um, you know, it, it's one of those songs that if it would have taken off, it would have been like one of those songs that you hear on the radio so much you're sick of it, like you shook me all night long. It's that good, I think. I don't think I'd get sick of it, though. But, man, just, man, if you don't know that song and you like fun music, listen to Doc and Crazy Mary Goes Round. It's amazing. I mean, Jesus Christ, you want to talk about Under the Radar? Ooh. All right, then we go into Haunted Lullaby. I dig this one. It's a mid-tempo jam. I again, I love Don's voice on this one. He sounds really cool. And it rocks. Uh, the next song is called In Your Honor, uh, in my opinion, Dawkins' greatest ballad. I love Alone Again. I love Slipping Away. I love many of their ballads. I love. But that is like the most gorgeous song they've ever done. You know, it's just, you know, it's a song about somebody that passed away. I figured, you know, I lit a candle in your honor today. And just the way he sings it, the vibe of the song, it's just a beautiful ballad. One of the greatest ballads ever. Definitely, in my opinion, the greatest docking ballad. Love it. Uh, all right, that's it. But remember back then in the 90s, wasn't this, what year was this? I'm thinking 90s. Yeah, 99. Most of the CDs in the 90s would end, but there would there'd be a hidden track? Well, there's one on this one called... Um, Little Brown Pill. It's a short instrumental. It's less than two minutes long. And man, was I surprised how amazing Jeff Pilsen is as a bass player. Never would have known. I've never heard anything that, like, you know, made me go, whoa, on any Dawkins song. Or War and Peace or everything else he's done. And he does, like, a bass solo during this instrumental that's just like, that's Jeff? Wow. And it's a cool... 
fast instrumental, heavy instrumental, it's badass. That's the end of the album. But there are bonus tracks, which I didn't know about till today. So what I'm telling you is on a first listen. So it's tainted because both these songs, I can see why they were left off. Though not bad, but I can see why they were left off. Uh, the first one is Upon Your Lips. Um, you know, it's, it, it, it does fit the album as far as, you know, the heavy and the melodic thing. But, you know, this one I would skip if it was actually on the album. That's why I say it, I can see why it didn't make it. And the next one is called Sign of the Times. Uh, look, just like, look, uh, what's the name of it again? Upon Your Lips. Just like that, I can see why it was left off the album. Uh, I do like it more than, than Upon Your Lips, but I would skip it too if it was part of the album. There'd be two skippable songs. Not horrible, but skippable, you know? Or, you know, okay, I'll deal with it. Not, you know, it's not one of those songs I would run to the CD player and, well, CD player because I don't own it on vinyl. Was this released on vinyl? Leave a comment below with a link because I'd buy it. So that's it. I love this album. Very under the radar. You all that like Daka and didn't give it a chance because George Lynch is not on it? You should. And I also want to give a shout out to John, uh, John Le Levy, Levy, whatever. That guitar player is awesome. The guy that's in docking now, wow, that guy rips. He's fucking amazing, but, you know, you're, you're tainted. We, you know, George Lynch, without him, a lot of people just don't care. There's a lot of bands like that. I, I know there's a lot of bands I love without key members. I love the Motley Crue 94 album, you know, and there's other stuff, you know. Uh, Deep Purple. Without Rod Evans, without Ian Gillen, without Blackmore. I like all that shit. So that's it, my friends. Thank you so much for watching. And please, seriously, listen to this. And Black Sabbath. And if you'd like to donate, I got a PayPal in the description below. And please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Stay frosty. Give this a chance. And listen to Black Sabbath. And smack them a gob.